now we're going to get into the real story of this cylinder head which is hands down the casting this is what the whole thing is about that makes this head just uniquely different from any previous uh, foreign country cylinder head China Taiwan or anywhere else now I'm going to we're going to take this one section at a time what we're going to concentrate first is uh, probably we'll go from left to right and we're going to study the intake side first so let's get a little close up here and see what we got okay what we're looking at here is a slice cutaway right down pretty much the center of the intake port and it reveals quite a few things of course this is where our guide was our intake guide and as I mentioned earlier it about stopped the saw blade the and you can see <laughs> I'm gonna try to zoom in but you can see the cut right there where that blade was trying to get through it I mean these are some high quality I believe he said phosphorus bronze guides you can't hold me a hundred percent to that but I'm pretty sure that's what they were but as you can see with the shape of the port now this is level the roof is level so it gives a good view look how far of a support we got on the spring perch and the water jacket location on the head now here's what I wanted to point out to you um, if I was going to hit this thing seven ways from Sunday typically what I do when I'm in there with my sonic checker is I try to line up going off of this here because one of the tricks and I, I, I probably haven't showed you this yet but when I'm really getting serious with one of these heads one of the main pinch points of the head beside the push rod bulge is this area right here from here to here and digging back look it is solid cast used to most of the cylinder heads out there have a water jacket right here that gets real close to the seat well they have filled that up with solid aluminum now before any of you start saying well how's it going to dissipate to heat in the direction that they have routed the water coming through the cylinder head pulling the heat from this direction they've done such a good job on channeling water flow through the head that really for the purposes of what this head's intended for there really wasn't a need because this was a seriously weak spot your water jacket was typically an oval type deal that come in here and it got real close because what they figured was they get it close enough the water can pull the heat out of the seat well now all the uh, the big guys like Dart and Brodex they went to this design right here where they're making this area solid because you go in there with the seat and you try to bring that up and tailor this short turn you would get dangerously near that water hole problem solved that ain't an issue anymore okay the next thing then this is what I really like is a cylinder head cutter look at this straight line okay we look at this and plus there's something I need to tell you newer versions of this head uh, which I think they're going to probably put it in a category of a 220 to 230 cc version when they produce it they're going to go up right here a hundred thousandths or eighty thousandths excuse me from right here up a taller which would raise this point this is your danger point right here on a 23 degree head because when you begin the cut and you want it you're going to have to leave the support for the guide you're going to come up and look at this looking at that position right there and going straight is going to get you almost where you're level with the top now there are a situation where when you're shaping it that what you're going to want to do you remember we're not going all the way there then you'd have to put epoxy in the bottom raise the bottom up and start turning it into a 200 thousandths raise runner head but just in its current form right here you've got ample thickness ample room to go in here and cut 
you, you, you know, but I'd probably begin to cut somewhere in here and go in there and get my shape to match correspondingly with the floor because that's what you want. You want to have that turn. Well, they've given us a serious amount of meat right here to cut, which, you know, is modification at this point to about that point right there to form the hump inside of the head. Uh, and we got a lot of thickness here for the uh, stud support. So, I mean, just right here tells a picture all in itself. Look at our point right here. We got plenty of room to go in there and cut and elevate. I mean, typically on my uh, stage four and all out stage five porting jobs, I actually use that as a marker. I'll purposely go come up and bust through right there, just a little bitty bust, and then I put a cup right here, put epoxy up underneath the pad, and then put a spring on it and compress it where the epoxy squeezes out and let it sit for 24, 36 hours. Remove the spring. The cup is now an integral part of the head protruding right there because this is 23 degrees. You see how it's laid back? And then I can come off that point and finish forming my hump right coming on right about through here. So we got plenty of material to carve and cut this head. And it has got one excellent port shape in it to begin with. I mean, just stock 200. It's, it's right there state of the art with anything else. Now, that right there shows our intake side our thickness, the absence of the water jacket, and look at the thickness right here surrounding the combustion chamber. Notice there's not a lot of them have holes right here for water clearing. They were really good. I mean, they have really filled this head. This is a cylinder head porter's dream right here. This is the kind of business that I like to have that just takes the chains off of me and lets me carve whatever I want. It is structurally better than almost any current head. And you don't want to even compare this to a pro comp because it's not even in the same league as this cylinder head is. All right, let's move on now to the next cutaway, our uh, exhaust port. 